It's the best of British, a brand new mainline steam locomotive for the 21st century. The A1 Trust number 60163 Tornado is now available in model form from Hornby. How will the mighty Tornado fare in this model review, with tests on style, strength and sheer power? In 2008, 60163 Tornado was released to traffic for the first time, running in on the Great Central Railway in her early grey livery, before being painted in her now familiar British Railways apple green. The locomotive was the culmination of a dream, people who shared a vision and were determined to turn it into a reality. The engine has achieved superstar status, appearing markedly in the national press as the star of Top Gear's Race to the North, and now it has been immortalised by Hornby in three model variations to be released this year. The first, and the subject of this review, is the budget railroad range Tornado. On receiving the model, the first thing I noticed was a little sticker applied to the handsome yellow and red packaging, a DCC ready sticker. The box is the standard Hornby affair, though annoyingly it does not use the plastic inserts of previous railroad models, regressing somewhat to the polystyrene tray of previous years. At a first glance, the bulk of the new build Peppercorn A1 is captured extremely well. Most notable are the roller bearing axle boxes on tender and engine, the shape of the cab roof, which is unique to Tornado, and the placement of the A1 whistle, different from the original engines, and the plain stovepipe chimney. On the front buffer beam, the electric lighting and their lamp brackets are absent, but the holes for their placement are not, leaving three distinct square holes in the running plate. The hole for the vacuum pipe in the buffer beam is also present, but no extra detail is provided with this budget model to fit. The handrails on the cab, tender and smoke deflectors are moulded onto the model, much like the Railroad Flying Scotsman model. The handrail for the boiler is separately fitted. The buffers are not sprung and are in fact moulded onto the model. This is something of a disappointment as my example had some damage to the right hand buffer. The plastic is clearly not durable enough and caution is advised when handling the buffers. If you are brave enough, as I intend to be, to fit new buffers, spare sprung buffers can be obtained from Bachmann of the correct LNER type. The tender shares this type of buffer. Detail on the rear of the tender body is crisply moulded Though again there is no vacuum pipe, but a hole for fitting one remains present. The tender is probably the strongest part of the model, capturing every single unique detail of Tornado's tender, down to the anti-slide plating on the water tank, to the cabinet of dials on the front. The spoked wheels are a joy to behold, and capture the prototype extremely well. The connection between the tender and locomotive is a simple bar arrangement, with two holes for changing the gap between cab and tender. This means the tender, like the Backman Peppercorn A1s, does not have pickups of any form. The cab is also moulded very well, entirely in plastic and as part of the injection moulded body shell. Two cab seats are provided, one either side. The cab roof, though relatively plain, is a very accurate presentation of the prototype's different curvature. The chassis is a very familiar affair, it is the standard Hornby Pacific arrangement. The Cartazzi wheel set, the two small wheels under the cab, are flangeless, allowing the model to negotiate tight curves with ease. When lined up alongside two Backman Peppercorn A1s, the differences are clear. The top engine is Backman's WP Allen model, and the bottom is Backman's own model of Tornado, first released in 2010. The first obvious difference between the three models is the application of their liveries. The Railroad Tornado is a budget model, and has a much simplified livery. The white-black white lining of the prototype is reduced to simple white lining on the locomotive, and to white-green white on the tender. The extensive red lining on the running plate, and frames of the locomotive and tender, have also been excluded. The overhead warning stickers are also absent. At the front end, the white lining on the buffer beam has also been excluded. For a budget model, this is understandable. The name plates are printed onto the smoke deflectors and are easily legible. Disappointingly, no silver paint has been applied to the smoke box. One of Tornado's most recognisable features are her burnished smoke box straps and handrail and to some extent this changes the face of the model somewhat. This is a very minor quibble with an otherwise excellently painted model. The livery application is crisp and sharp, the model looking smart regardless of its much simplified livery. Each model has to pull a train of coaches, the standard coach being used for this test, the ubiquitous Hornby Mark 1 coach. 
The weight of one Hornby Mark I coach is 5 ounces, roughly 140 grams. The Railroad Tornado weighed in at 12.7 ounces, approximately 360 grams, and its tender weighed in at 3.2 ounces, approximately 90 grams. The model, according to Hornby, utilises a three-pole motor, not a five-pole one. It did not seem to make much of a difference, as the Tornado model was both quiet, smooth running and powerful. Fourteen coaches were pulled on the level without any problems. The recommended retail price for the Railroad Tornado is £76.99, which is $125.89. In comparison, the cost of a full-spec A4 Pacific is now reaching the £140 mark, whereas the high-spec Tornado model, not yet released, is set at £92.99. However, the Railroad Tornado is definitely value for money against the Backman Tornado model, which has an RRP comparable to the Hornby A4s of £141.95. Overall, I'm sold on the virtues of the Railroad range, affordable, well-performing models that look enough like their prototypes to delight and entertain any child or railway enthusiast on their train set. So on that bombshell, it's time to end. Until next time, thank you very much for watching.